Greetings and welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of the Cultural Flavors. Ramadan edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mohammed Al Qatan. And I'm your co-host, Iman Marafi. So, Iman, a lot of people insist to fast even though they have a chronic diseases. Yes. What's your advice to those people? Well, to listen to your doctor. First of all, before the, the holy month of Ramadan, uh, go have like a, a, a talk to your doctor. Tell him that you want to uh, to try at least to fast before and see like if people with diabetes uh, have to like check before if they can or cannot so that if the doctor tells you not to fast please don't do that because he knows better than you he he worries about your health and we actually care about you dear viewers this is something very important for us and this is why you have to be really careful about yourself or other beloved one. So Iman, which country are we talking about today? Today our country, we are always distinguished with our uh, guests. I agree. Today our country is from Lebanon. Nice. Yes, I love Lebanon and I've been there before. I've been there too? Yes. It's and really nice. Yes. Yes. And this person is very valuable. Like he's, 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 he works in the uh, IOM, yes. which is the uh, International Organization for Migrants. Mm -hmm. And we will be having like uh, such a good talk. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about Lebanon, specific the holy month of Ramadan. So dear viewers, let's go watch this report and we will be back. Stay tuned. Lebanon, a country that effortlessly blends history culture and natural beauty. The capital Beirut is a captivating center of this vibrant metropolis. With its picturesque landscapes, stunning architecture, and a rich tapestry of traditions, Beirut offers an unparalleled experience to those seeking something extraordinary. Home to warm and welcoming people, Lebanon has mouth-watering cuisine, gorgeous views, and remarkable ancient ruins. The culture of Lebanon reflects the legacy of various civilizations spanning thousands of years. Ramadan in Lebanon is full of life and is one of the most vibrant and energetic of Ramadan observances. Overflowing mosques, crowding at the centuries-old souks, and mass iftar meals deterring traffic are common. The breaking of the Ramadan fast at sundown is like a luxurious event in Lebanon and is often hosted by families, businesses, charities, and several other organizations. Lebanon is home to some of the best dishes in the world. During Ramadan in Lebanon, iftar is almost always a four-course meal with soup, salad, main dish, and dessert. Staples include lentil soup and fatouche, Arabic sweets like baklava and julab is the famous Ramadan drink, prepared from grape, molasses, and rose water, garnished with peanuts and served cold. Cooking iftar also brings family members together each day over family and loved ones' conversations. And we're back, dear viewers, with this report, this beautiful report about Lebanon. And today we have this very uh, gentleman guest uh, who is from also Lebanon. His name is Mr. Uh, Mazen Abu Hassan. Welcome. We are very honored to have you. Good evening and Ramadan Kareem to you and to all the viewers. We are so glad to have you, Mr. Mazen, talking about the Holy Month of Ramadan, specifically in Lebanon. Thank you. Yeah. At the beginning, can you like tell us and explain to the viewers a little bit about yourself? 
Sure, my name is Mazan Abul Hassan. I'm from Lebanon, as you mentioned, uh, a beautiful country that everyone in Kuwait uh, loves. Uh, I have been working with the United Nations for more than 17 years. Mashallah. Uh, I studied psychology and also I studied a master in travel and tourism. So this has something related to culture. And when you invited me to this show, I was very excited because this is an area that I enjoy talking about and I love as well. Perfect. Yeah. We're so glad to know more about you since you have a, a really a long experience. And we would like to know, I would like to know, uh, from where exactly you live in, which part? Uh, I'm from the Mount Lebanon, okay. from a city called, or a village called Shbeniye. And I'm sure many of the Kuwaiti will know this village because this village is uh, very close to Hamdoun, Hamana, and oh, yeah. uh, Falouga. And Where many Kuwaitis, Kuwaitis, used to live. <laughs> and Kuwaitis used to live there. Yes. Still, they go so, there always. Yeah. They have yeah. houses there. Correct. And I was surprised that even during winter time, which is cold, so many Kuwaitis, they like to go there. Exactly. Because the village uh, where I'm coming from is cold in winter, at mm -hmm. least for me. I like summertime more, and that's why I do enjoy winter in Kuwait. But Kuwaitis, they enjoy this weather. Mm -hmm. So still, in the cold weather, they go to Falouga, to Hamana, and they like to enjoy their winter time there. It yes, is. we also go skiing, and because here in Kuwait it's very hot, so when we want to travel, we want to go to somewhere which is cold. Exactly, and that's why Lebanese people always are welcoming the Kuwaitis. And you know, we have a very strong relationship with Lebanese as well as we like the Lebanese food. We're going to talk about this cuisine, but before we go deep into that, Mr. Mazen, I would like to know the preparation for the holy month of Ramadan, such as a specific and unique month in the year. I would like to know what people usually do in Lebanon. Sure, I think like many countries where they celebrate the, the Ramadan months, in Lebanon the most important is before Ramadan the preparation for food. Okay. So you can see all the housewives, the women, mm -hmm. the mothers, the sisters, they go and they do the shopping for Ramadan. Right. Especially if they want to prepare kibbe, they want to prepare some busik, they be go before Ramadan and they start the shopping. Okay. Because the whole purpose is to have all the family together. The yes. whole purpose is to have all the friends together. And I think during the month there is a nice competition between families families who will cook better, okay. who is coming with, oh. a, with some of the creative <laughs> ideas. So this is the main uh, preparation when it comes to the food. And for sure the preparation will be where they would like to have the iftar together, or who, who they would like to invite, exactly. uh, which kind of uh, friends, which kind of family members. Mm -hmm. So if we focus on food. But for sure, always we remind ourselves that this month is a month for the gratitude, to be sure. thankful, and this is also is taken into consideration. Absolutely. In some part of Lebanon also, they care about the decoration for Ramadan. So you can see that some people, they decorate their house, mm -hmm. they bring some items that uh, are uh, specifically for this holy month. So mm -hmm. this is part uh, of the preparation as well. That's very nice. Yeah. What about the children? What do they do? Well, the children before, this like their approach to Ramadan was a different one. Mm -hmm. They were always looking for the new clothes that they will have. Mm -hmm. uh, but until now, uh, in some areas of Lebanon, they like to go to Luna Park. Okay. Because always after iftar, if the weather is nice, mm -hmm. there is a tradition in some areas of Lebanon that children would like to accompany their parents to the Luna Park. Okay. Okay. And this is something that I think it's unique. It's not like before, but still there are some parts where going to Luna Park is considered as part of the entertainment after Iftar where the families will take their children there. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Mr. Mazen, I would like to know which kind of activities people do in the holy month of Ramadan in Lebanon? Well, the activity is mainly preparation for iftar, for suhoor, mm -hmm. and also uh, after iftar, people would like to go out. Okay. Many of those who like the shisha, they mm -hmm. would like to go for Ramadan tents. Okay. They would like to listen to some music always with their friends and their families. That's when we are talking about the families. For children, as I mentioned before, they prefer to uh, to be playing around okay. and then to have candies or uh, to have this all kind of things. Uh, and some nice activities that they do, there are some of the um, Sufi music that can be played or some of the music that is mainly specific to Ramadan. Okay. Uh, we have some singers like, for example, they bring Um Kulsum. They, they would like to sing these songs that are of a certain... Uh, Live? Live, oh, yes. Nice. So after dinner, after iftar, when everyone has finished this, they would like to go to such kind of concerts. Mm -hmm. But again, it depends from family to family what are their priorities. Yes. But the majority prefer to be 
together in the family and to enjoy time together. Yes, yes. It's very interesting that people would like to go outside. Yes, yes. Eating outside. Yes, it's part. It's part of the culture. Generally, for the first ten days. People prefer to cook at home. Okay. But after the tenth day, I think people get tired. I feel tired. <laughs> like they get okay. Now we invited whomever we want to invite. And we used Let's to start to go outside. And we yeah. used to the food. Exactly. Now it's our turn to go visit people. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. very interesting. Okay. So regarding we're, we're talking about food, mm -hmm. what are the preparations for uh, the food? What kind of food you serve in the holy month of Ramadan? Well, the must-have is fattoush and lentil soup. This is oh, the most healthy. important. Like this is, you start your uh, to break the fast uh -huh. by fatouch and by lentil soup. Mm -hmm. okay. And there is a lot of competition who prepare the better or the, the best lentil soup because oh, the lentil there soup. are so many ways to do it. Some people put a lot of um, butter. Some people prepare it with the red lentil. Some people prepare it with the brown lentil. So this is as a starter. Mm -hmm. okay. In addition to that, you have the. Um, what they would like to drink. We have the jillab. I'm not sure if jillab is something that Kuwaiti also drink or no. Jillab is made... I haven't tried it okay. actually. Okay. Okay. Jillab is made of uh, molasses okay. and it's made of uh, rose water. Mm. Uh -huh. So this is something that oh, they drink. Delicious. Yes, and also they put some uh, pine uh, seed in it. So if they want to make it more complicated okay. uh, or more sophisticated. In some area they drink amaruddin. Mm. Mm. So this is also something that uh, people like, although that it's too sweet. Yes, okay. it's, it's not something. I was going to say that. It's yeah. not something that I would prefer to drink. <laughs> I yeah. would prefer the jellab, but these are also some of the things that they have. When it comes to the real food, mm -hmm. I think the majority of the cuisine, the Lebanese cuisine, is served also during Ramadan. So okay. some people will go for mluhiyeh, some mm -hmm. people will go for mughrabiyeh, rice and meat, rice and chicken. These are always important and should be on the table. And for sure, they could be the sambusik that they the prepared appetizers. before. Exactly. Yeah. But here I would like to highlight that the Lebanese cuisine is very healthy. Yes, mm -hmm. you are right. So even during the month of Ramadan, people eat healthy, although that they like to have the meat or the heavy food or the fatty food, but still the cuisine is based on the meza and it's based on a variety of healthy yeah, dishes. Yeah, because you well. also cook with olive oil. Exactly. For us, olive oil is mandatory. It's very important. Yeah. And here I recall like uh, my grandmother, God bless her soul, for her cooking with olive oil and with minced meat mm -hmm. is a must. If you are cooking with uh, other kind of vegetable oils for, the, for her, it's not any kind of food. Um, like if you need to eat, you need to have the olive oil and the food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's nice, yeah. This is really interesting. And this is really good advice that our dear viewers could follow is using olive oil. And it's very healthy. Is yes. healthy? Yeah, it is very healthy. You are right. So talking about food, uh, Mr. Mazen, it's in every episode, my colleague Iman prepare a dish for us. So let's see. And we can eat the dish or not? Absolutely. Yeah, of course and, you can try it. And yeah. you're going to have the chance to rate her dish. So <laughs> okay. it's going to be interesting. So what she's preparing for us? Let's right? see what she has for well, today is very simple. It's uh, loaded nachos. Okay. You can eat it like after uh, iftar or you can eat it for uh, suhoor. Okay, as it's a well. snack, you mean? Because it's a snack, okay. yeah, yeah, it could be. You know, sometimes actually uh, we crave for eating breakfast for futur Correct. or sometimes for something that we don't usually eat for the holy month of Ramadan. Correct. So it could be this, Yani. Okay. But Iman, I'm seeing something brown there. What's that? This one? Yeah. This is the minced meat. Okay. So you will put minced meat and nachos? <laughs> yes. That's interesting. Yes. Like so for me, nachos is mainly chips and... Uh, Carbs. Yeah. No, and a little bit of cheese, but with yeah. meat? It's with protein now. Okay. So you could add also <laughs> kidney beans with it. Okay. So, but I don't know, like people have some prefer, others they don't prefer. So it's up to their likings. So what we have today here is already ready-made the uh, nachos. We have minced meat. We have the cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. I know cheddar cheese is yellow, but they they add colors to it. This is without added colors. And we have sour cream, tomato, and cut uh, diced uh, onion. Mm -hmm. And we have the spices. I will tell you what spices for the loaded uh, for the for the cheese itself. And for the minced meat, what to put? Like we have separate things to, to do. But before that, let's go for a short break, then we will come back.
And we're back, dear viewers, with our esteemed guest, Mr. Mazen Abu Hassan. We're talking about Lebanon specifically during the holy month of Ramadan. We are having a good and lovely chat with you, Mr. Mazen. Same here. Thank you. Before we go deep into more questions, let's have Iman what she's going to do for us as well as how is everything going so I far. prepared two pots. Okay. One is for the minced meat. The other one is for the cheese. All right. I'll start with the meat first. Mm -hmm. uh, I already cooked it with onion and garlic. Okay. So what I'll do now is that I will add it here with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And then I'll add my spices. So there is olive oil. There is. There is. That's why we had a good snack. <laughs> <laughs> We cannot live without olive oil, actually. <laughs> and then after that, I will add uh, a little bit of uh, oregano mm -hmm. and a little bit of smoked paprika and along with the Cajun spice. Right. If you don't have Cajun spice, it's okay. You can put all the seven spice and it's up to you. After you finish it, we will give, uh, we will have like a, we will go for the cheese. Perfect. Uh, we will add a little bit of, uh, it's not a little bit, it's a good amount of butter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's not a heavy meal, so we don't need to run after this, right? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. I think <laughs> one hour we need okay. to run. <laughs> <laughs> then we will uh, add uh, flour to it. Uh, I will make it until it's golden, like not golden brown, a little bit of golden color. Then uh, we will add the cheddar cheese mm. along with a little bit of salt. Uh, the smoked paprika will give it color and will give it a good taste along with also uh, powdered garlic. Then we will add a little bit of milk. The secret ingredients to, to give it a taste like the cinema is that you <laughs> add the jalapeno vinegar. Oh. Is it a strong one or no? Yes. So for people who don't like chili a lot, because I need to give no, you a good grade. it's not that hot. <laughs> if it is too hot. No, 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 it's I'm, not I'm, that I'm hot. I'm not a spicy guy, so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that hot. I, oh. I made it into consideration. Perfect. Yeah. So I will start cooking, then we will continue after. I will tell you what to do the other process. Perfect. So while you're preparing, I'm going to have the chat with Mr. Mazin. So Mr. Mazin, we have not touched about the sweet in Lebanon. Yes. Th this is this is the most important part, especially <laughs> in Ramadan. Time. Yes. Of course. I'm not sure if in Kuwait you have the same. We have something called killaj. Okay. It's a kind of pastry where people put inside or cheese or ashta. Mm -hmm. And then you can hear when they are frying it in the pastry shops mm -hmm. and the sweet shops, everyone is going there to buy it for Ramadan mainly. This is a uh -huh. dish Except that is prepared mainly for Ramadan. All right. uh, you cannot find it outside Ramadan or if you find it, it's not available everywhere. Mm -hmm. But for the months of Ramadan, this is the main sweet. Okay. And for sure, you have many other things. Okay. You have the ma'mool. Yes. Oh, we have the meghli. Yeah. Meghli is not only for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Meghli is prepared on specific occasion. Okay. It's made of uh, rice. Okay. And then the most important with the meghli that they put the, the coconut on top of it, okay. like the coconut powder. But you have to put almond, you have to put nuts, you have to put pine seeds. Mm -hmm. And the way that it looks, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But when you taste it, it's even more better. Uh -huh. But after you eat the meghli, you have to run maybe two hours <laughs> because it's very heavy, but it's very yeah. tasty. And in some areas, you have the meghli that is prepared with uh, tea. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting the rice, you put the same kind of uh, pepper, and then the smell of it is amazing, especially in winter time. Mm -hmm. In summertime, meghli is not something that people eat, but in winter, it's something that is it very recommended. Absolutely, it yes. is recommended. And for sure, we have the ataif. Okay. And the ataif is prepared with ashta, mm -hmm. sometimes with the cream. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they prepare it with the uh, Nuts, okay. and some people, if they want to be uh, too much, uh, let's say, <laughs> modern, they put some of the nuts inside, which I don't like it. Oh, okay. no, it's I, I prefer the traditional. The traditional uh, one, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and the, the most important part about Lebanon that the sweets are different between regions. So if you go to Saida and to uh, Tyr, or if you go, for example, to Beirut, or if you go to Tripoli, mm -hmm. you can have different kinds of sweets. Mm -hmm. And this oh. is something very important. Like last time I was discussing with some, with some friends from Tripoli, they were mentioning sweets that I have never heard about. Interesting. So even for us living in Lebanon, 
you have to go Just to like cities, that, to big course. cities, and to discover what kind of food they have and what kind of sweets uh, such, they do have as well. Such diversity. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. What about places? What are going to be the most crowded or people who really seek to go during the whole of Ramadan? Uh, during the month of Ramadan, people prefer to go to city center, especially okay. to Hamra area. They, mm. they like to go to... Raushi, okay. they like to go to Saida. I've been to the Raushi. You've been to Raushi. It's amazing. <laughs> especially you want to spend the whole day sitting next to it and, and drinking coffee. Sit. Especially if you are going there during the sunset or mm. during the nice weather. Correct. You can sit uh, in the nice it. restaurant. Yes, yes, or even if you are not sitting at the restaurant, if you sit at the corniche Correct. or if you walk at the corniche, uh, it's a very nice uh, it's place, true. especially during Ramadan time. Exactly. Yeah. It is. So I could hear the, the meat. Yes. And I can smell the good uh, smell as well. Perfect. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it later. Uh, what about the Eid? What do you do? What, do, what preparations do you have for the Holy Month? Uh, for after, like for well, the Eid? The preparation is mainly what people will be giving as the sweets. Mm. And it's mainly kak or mamul. Okay. And then the mamul is the also it's about how they prepare it, mm -hmm. what kind of a special taste that they put inside. But the kak is something very important as well. And the most important for the kids during the Eid is that the first day of the Eid, they go to, the, to their grandparent to have money. All right. This is something very important. <laughs> and I think everyone is looking at it. Okay. And also they wear the clothes of the Eid. Yeah, the new clothes. So they will compete who has the better colors, better okay. shape, the shoes for the Eid. Exactly. Like even now, the time is different than before. Before, people have the clothes for the Eid only once, but okay. that was 50 years ago. Maybe. Yeah. Now, even more, if people are going... More go fancy. Yes, because now we are more uh, like uh, uh, consuming things, Correct. but still the taste of the Eid is completely different okay. and it's very important. And in some areas, for example, during the Eid, people would like to go to Al Mubarat in order to provide food for those who are in need. They like to organize iftars. There are a lot of uh, organizations who, who like to organize the uh, iftar uh, for people who are most vulnerable or people who are in need. And this is something that I do really appreciate in so many places, including in uh, Lebanon. But during the holy month of Ramadan, we come back a little bit back again. Uh, for like the mosques and the the, the last ten days of uh, the nights of uh, the destined days, what do you do? Generally, yes, people would like to go to the mosques. Uh, they, like they go throughout the months, but right. the last ten days, yes, they prefer to go maybe to biggest. Uh, mosques as well Correct. and we have plenty of them in Lebanon especially in Beirut or in Tripoli or in Saida and some of the nice things that happen in Ramadan in Lebanon we still have uh, al Mtaharati, okay. which is the person who come late night in Ooh. order to make people to wake, wake uh, for the prayer and it's very nice especially when it's not uh, so cold outside or it's not rainy the sound of Am Saharati is very uh, so what amazing. So what Lebanon. he just, just what he's uh, what he's doing exactly? Well, he's he's calling for the prayer. Okay. And then he's calling people uh, to go and to pray uh, okay. during the morning. But it's going to be the neighborhood. Uh, Absolutely, yes. Very yes. interesting. Yes. Yeah. So I I hear uh, you comp a lot of family compete with the touche. Yes. What about the bullet? Well, tabbouleh also they compete with it, but uh, fatouche is uh, considered uh, I, I'm, I'm more for Ramadan than tabbouleh. Ah. Tabbouleh is available throughout yeah. the year, but fatouche is mainly for Ramadan, but you can eat it always. And uh, the competition is mainly if you put the uh, molasses in it uh, of um, pomegranate, mm. or if you put uh, the salt and the citron only. Perfect. So that's the competition. That's I like the one with molasses. <laughs> Along with the garlic. Absolutely, yes, yes. yes. This is something uh, good as well. Yeah. So, Mr. Manza, let's see how is Iman doing so far? Well, I'm doing great. I finished the meat already. Mm -hmm. It's done very quickly. Well, I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Actually, so. both of us are okay. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I melted the butter. I will add the uh, the flour to it. And then I'm just to going to make it golden mm -hmm. color. And then uh, after that, we will put the spices with the salt. Then we will add the cheddar cheese. All right. And then we're good to go. So hopefully then so. Then we will uh, assemble things together. Per perfect. So dear viewers, let's have a break and I'm going to continue. So please don't go away.
And we're back, dear viewers. And now it's time to add the cheese and uh, wait for uh, waiting for it to melt. So uh, while it's melting, uh, Mr. Mazen, like, um, what about your experience here in Kuwait? Like, how many years have you been here? Well, I've been in Kuwait for three years and a half. Okay. First three months were not so good because I arrived during the COVID time. Oh. So, <laughs> so imagine uh, how it was, like the situation all around the world was uh, unstable. We didn't know what is COVID, how it will be. Yeah. So first three months, they were not easy. But after that, I get used to Kuwait and I love Kuwait, uh, especially during Ramadan time, because I think what you have here, the culture of Diwaniya mm -hmm. is very unique. Yeah. Uh, especially when you work in the diplomatic field or in the U United Nations field, you always go to this Diwaniya during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So I had the chance to go uh, to Ramadans last year and the year before. And it was very interesting and very impressing to see the vibes of Ramadan. I think the vibes of Ramadan in Kuwait are very unique and are so different from other places. Like how people gather all together in Diwaniya, the spirit that they do have, it's something very important. Right. The other part is the, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, the Rabga, because it took me some time to understand <laughs> what what are you talking about, the Rabga. <laughs> also, it, it is so nice, especially that it's very late. Yeah. But the problem is that how to wake up the second day, especially if you have work. Yeah. <laughs> so we go to Rabga, but the second day to wake up and go to work was a problem. So these are a few things that I enjoyed during Ramadan but time. But time you, you, you get to adjust to the things, you, the timings, you know? Yes, yes. So first Ramadan was a bit uh, very... Uh, difficult for me because I didn't know what to expect, but yeah. last year it was uh, enjoyable. So what do you think about the Kuwaiti cuisine? Yes, uh, I'm a lover of rice okay. and the majboos is my favorite uh, dish and this <laughs> is something that I do like. And you have a very famous fish as well, the baidi fish. Yes. Mm. This is something that I do like. Mtabbaik? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then during Ramadan, you have al gamat. Okay. And my colleagues at the office, they introduced to me al gamat with cheese inside. Oh. And that was my favorite. Yeah. That was very good uh, I think sweet it's from It's similar Kuwait. to Jubnia. Uh, it is, it is. But I think here there are some places that they do it um, in a very nice way. Mm -hmm. And then you start eat and then you, you stop count. Oh. So you start one, two, <laughs> and then exactly. you say only two. And then you end up having more than five or Once six. Once you pop, you never stop. Ab absolutely. <laughs> and then you have uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is something is nice because I like saffron. Mm -hmm. And then this is one of the nice uh, things that I do eat in Kuwait as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, how was Iman doing? Actually, it started to melt. Good. Yeah, I'm just going to assemble now the nachos. Mm -hmm. Add a little bit of the minced meat with uh, onion and uh, uh, cubed tomatoes. Then we will add the cheese and then we will make layers out of them. Perfect. Wow. So, yeah. how many layers will you put inside? As much as you want. <laughs> it depends, yeah. Let's see how tasty is it. That <laughs> it should be tasty. Yeah, it should uh, be. Mr. Mazen, you've been as a nature of your job. Mm -hmm. You've probably been a lot of countries. Now, I would like to see the, your experience, especially during the holy month of Ramadan. How is it comparing with Kuwait or comparing with Lebanon? What are the things, similar things or something is, is unique? My main experience outside during Ramadan was in Turkey because I spent nine years in Turkey. Oh, mashallah. And what was good about it is that uh, each province you go in Turkey is like you are going to a new country. Interesting. Like you go to the southeast, it's different than Istanbul, mm -hmm. it's different than Ankara where I was based, it's different than the seaside. And even the way how people prepare food is very, uh, let's say, diverse Correct. in these places. But the common thing is that how people gather all together. I think this is something very important during Ramadan months, like uh, people coming together, the family coming together. Mm -hmm. This is something that is common to all these places, including in Kuwait, for sure. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but I believe now, Mr. Mazar, I would like to go back now to Kuwait. There is no culture shock because we have a large, a lot of uh, a big community, Lebanese community, as well as Lebanese food is probably everywhere. everywhere. Well, in Kuwait, all food around the world is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why wherever you go, you have the Italian, you have the Chinese, you have the Asian food. So everything is but, uh, here. Whenever I go, like I travel, I look for the Lebanese food. Yes. yes. Because first of all, it's healthy. Second, like if you eat much protein, you will be full very quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, like but, but you have to come to Lebanon and try it in Lebanon because the Lebanese food there will have a different taste. I came to Lebanon. Where I did you go? <laughs> I, as I told you, we went to the Rausha uh -huh. and then I went to the malls. Then I ate from like separate restaurants. So what I liked. Did you try Fatayr in Lebanon? No. So Fatayr is something very important. I, I didn't see anyone. Fatayr with uh, spinach or with cheese or uh, with kishik or with za'atar. You should come and then I should go, you we, know, we will try to take the holy mother from a place. Yeah. You should, yes. <laughs> this is very interesting. Yeah. I would like to know the nature of your okay. job, Mr. Mazen. Sure. Uh, here I'm the representative of the United Nations Migration Agency. Basically, we work on two sides. First of all, uh, we, we try to support migrant displaced people, those who are in need of support during conflict or during natural uh, disasters. disasters around the world. And second part of our work, which is like 30%, we provide technical advice and policy advice on anything related to migration governance. Mm -hmm. Why we are in Kuwait? We have been in Kuwait for 30 years. This year, 2024, we are celebrating 30 years of partnership with the government of uh, Kuwait. And we're looking forward to more years of this partnership. Uh, Kuwait has been a very important humanitarian partner for us. Like for the last 15 years, Kuwait have donated more than 70 million US dollar to our operation around the world. The recent one was last year uh, during the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, but their contribution was in so many countries. They provided support in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, uh, in Yemen, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Turkey, in Ukraine as well. And this support is very crucial for us because now we are talking about the holy months of Ramadan and the importance of the family coming together and the importance of food. But we shouldn't forget that so many people around the world, even being with the family together is not a possibility. Correct. These are the, uh, the displaced people, these are the migrants that are moving from place to place. So uh, this is something that we do. We are trying to provide support to these people mm -hmm. and the support can vary from different things. We provide them shelter support, Correct. we provide them psychosocial support, which is something very important, access to health. This is part of the work that we do. So our, ma our work mainly in Kuwait is with so many uh, partners. We work with Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with Ministry of Interior, with Public Authority of Manpower, with Kuwait Fund, but also with the private sector, with many civil societies, with individual, with private sector, and with so many partners in order to achieve what we want to achieve, which mainly provision of humanitarian support mm -hmm. to those in need, including the displaced people, including migrants and the host communities that are hosting these people. This is really interesting and we would like to thank you for all the effort that Mr. Mazen are putting. And we would like, so dear viewers, to thank Allah for the gift that we are together. We live in a safe country yeah. and this is something that we have to appreciate it. And, and here, uh, allow me also to thank the Kuwaiti people mm -hmm. because the humanitarian work are, are, and part of the work that we are doing is part of their nature. Correct. Like this is something very natural that they do. And we saw this last year during the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, uh, more than 70% of the fund that we receive were from collection from people mm -hmm. when they did a marathon to, uh, to get the fund. And within 24 hours, they were able to raise a big amount of money that went to the people who are in need and the most vulnerable ones. This is really interesting. This is actually, uh, Mr. Mazen, something that we've been doing this in the past, that we help, we, we, we'd love, we love to help other people. And we're going to continue helping other people as much as we could. So. Let's go to my question. Sure. About the culture shock. Yeah. So I just tell you that it's a big community and the food probably is similar. Mm -hmm. Did you find the culture shock when you come? Well, my, my first cultural shock was the language. Okay. Although that we all speak Arabic, but sometimes people speak uh, some of the language or some of the words that I have no clue <laughs> what, what is it. And until now, each time I go back to my colleagues in the office and say, can you explain what do you mean by this <laughs> and that? Because sometimes we are talking about the same thing, but it's completely different. But I hope, like they don't trick you and tell you something that doesn't mean what it means. And that's why I ask more than one person. So oh, yeah, do, you have any, do you have an example? Uh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> for example, Hali Wali, for me, uh, it, it took some time for me to understand what uh, what does it mean. Yeah. Uh, but you get it. Uh, yes, yes. Finally. For sure, I, I get it. But also the cultural shock is not only for me as Lebanese in Kuwait, but for colleagues who are Kuwaiti and me Lebanese. Like when I say things for them, what are you talking about? Okay. So we need always to find these things. <laughs> but we have a lot of similarities. Absolutely. We have a lot of similarities in the tradition. And because the Kuwaiti go always to Lebanon. So for me, it's not I'm coming to a country where I don't know this, uh, the people who live there. We, we are getting used to them since long time. But there are also some cultural nice things that happen in Kuwait. One of the, my best experience was last year there was a, um, an event. It's called the Sidrat al Lo'lo, which is the history of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing one. It was with Suad Abdullah. We translated Abdallah. that. Oh, really? Yes, it, here in the Ministry of Information. It was very beautiful show. Like yeah. we, we were invited by the Ministry of Information and the Ministry of Culture. And I think it was one of the best events that I attended so far in Kuwait. Yeah, and for sure all the events that happened in Sheikh Jaber Al Sabah uh, Center, Center and uh, some of the events at Ad Dar Al Aslamiya, Al Athar, also these are very uh, interesting events. So, culturally speaking, I don't think there is a ch shock, but it's more an enrichment. Correct. Yeah. So, I believe it's almost a time for serving the food. Yep. We are ready. Perfect. We are ready. So, dear viewers, let's have a break and we're going to continue. So, please don't go away. everyone, today we're in Suq al one of the oldest suits in Kuwait and a great shopping destination. So follow me along as we take a tour in Suq al So today we're in a thobe shop and you can see this is the traditional thobe worn by old ladies and you can see all the intricate designs that blend in the Kuwaiti culture and Arabic modesty heritage. So there are different colors and it's very colorful and people wear them on different occasions. So some people will wear them during Eid, some people during Ramadan, people will wear them when greeting their guests on special occasions. It's a very beautiful top and as you can see, it's absolutely amazing, the colorful design. Now we're at a bish store. So a bish is a traditional gown usually worn by men in celebratory occasions, such as Eid, family gatherings and greetings. They're worn over a dishdasha, and as you can see, the gold embroidery in it. Now this is the traditional one, but for over time, considering the new changes in fashion, that a younger generation version has been developed. And as you can see, it's so cute and it fits for the younger generation as well. So of course we can't forget about our little ones, our little princes and queens who celebrate Gergian, which happens in the middle of Ramadan. That is their highlight. They put on these amazing colorful dresses with all these intricate designs. And the most amazing thing about Mbarakiya is you can find a variety of these costumes. Uh, you will find them at different prices, so you will find whatever suits you. Thank you for joining us on our tour of Sugal Mbarakiya, where as you can see, we, you can find amazing clothes and a lot of variety at affordable prices, not just for you, but for you and your family of all different ages. I hope you enjoyed our tour. Ramadan Karim.
And we're back, dear viewers, and you could see the final look of our dish today. The nachos looks really delicious. We would like to thank you, Iman. You're very welcome. And could you tell us more before? Mr. Mazen, we are really hungry and really we are looking forward to try it. Yeah, and uh, this one only for me or I can share, I, I need to share it. Uh, it should be sharing. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's, talk sharing about, is caring. let's talk about it later because it looks so de delicious. Let's see. So sharing is caring. Probably you could try. So Iman, could you tell us a little bit more about the nachos? Yeah, well, uh, for those who like missed maybe the, the, the first segment, uh, we minced the meat, then we uh, stir, uh, stir fried it with the uh, onion, garlic, and then I added a little bit of uh, uh, tomato paste with it, along with the, uh, some spices, Cajun spices and salt with black pepper. If you don't have Cajun, you could add uh, seven spices, whatever you like. Uh, back to our cheese sauce, which is butter, and then with the uh, flour, you make it until it's golden a little bit. Then you add gradually the milk, don't be like me, I added it uh, like directly to it and then uh, there were uh, small clumps first. Mm -hmm. So you will take, it will take time to, to remove those clumps. Perfect. Then you will add the uh, cheddar cheese uh, with the most important thing, which is the vinaigrette of uh, the jalapeno. Nice. It looks so delicious. Can I have a second one? Or of only? course. This is going to be, you, you should this try This is it. really so good, Iman. So we, you are a very good cook. Oh, thank you. Especially <laughs> with the cheese. And it's not so hot, by the way. Like, it's not so chilly. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a very like, good taste. If you want it to chill, you can add like jalapeno on top of it. Correct. Yeah. And it's really delicious, Iman. We would like to thank you for doing this. Bon appetit. As, <laughs> as usual, Iman. So the rating, Mr. Mazen, about Iman dish. Out of 10. 10 plus. 10 plus, oh, for thank sure. You. So good, thank you so much. It's Congrats. Good. It's really so good. Oh, thank you Perfect. so much. <laughs> so, Mr. Mazen, unfortunately, we are reaching the end of this episode. So, if you have a last advice to our dear viewers, so please go ahead and then we're going to eat the whole matches together. Thank you so much again, and Ramadan Kareem. And I think the last word would be that we should remind ourselves that the sense of community, the sense of giving, the sense of gratitude should not be only during the month of Ramadan. It should be all over the year. And thanks again for hosting me. It was a nice um, int interview. We actually have a good conversation with you as well. So it's really lovely. Yeah, we enjoy the time. It is, it is yes. very interesting. So, so this is all for me. That's we agreed. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see after that. <laughs> So, dear viewers, we're going to see you in a different episode. Until then, be safe. Bye-bye.